You're watching Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the NTA. To begin our conversation on the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations Week, here is a background report put together by Oyeyemi Ajayi. The Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, was initially known as the Public Relations Association of Nigeria until it was renamed in 1972. It was established in 1963. The body attained the status of a chartered institute in June 1990 through Decree No. 16, now an act of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. By virtue of this law, NIPR derived the power to register members, regulate the practice development of the PR profession. It also monitors professional conduct through an established code of ethics and professional conduct regime. As it is the practice with respectable professional organizations elsewhere, the law allows standard academic and professional qualifications for admission into the institute. Part of his vision is to provide opportunities for members to meet and exchange views and ideas, as well as to raise standards within the profession through the promotion of best practice, including the production of best practice guides, case studies, training events, and continuous professional development scheme. It has the mission to be the leading regional public relations organization and to unite the profession as a whole, as well as enhance the image of public relations in Nigeria. The Institute has mapped out a platform for industry experts to meet next week with focus on leveraging public relations as a critical asset for Nigeria's economic and reputation renaissance. It holds between April 22 to 26, 2024 at June 12 Cultural Center at Belkuta, Ogun State. Now, how effective can this be to national development? This is an issue on the table before guests today. All right, uh, thank you very much, Oyeyemi Ajayi, for that background report. And um, to begin this conversation uh, this morning, I'd like to introduce here in the studio Professor O.K. Ikechuku, um, is Executive Director, Development Specs Academy here in Abuja. A pleasure to welcome you to Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. All right. We have also been joined in the studio by General Sani Usman Kukasheka, former Army spokesperson and fellow NIPR. Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. Good morning and thank you for having me on the program. Yemre. All right. Welcome, uh, gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be introducing uh, on the program and joining us for the conversation, uh, a veteran broadcaster, our very own uh, Many thanks for joining us, Samoji Bakonjola, for the conversation. Thank you very much for having me. Thank okay, you. let's uh, begin. Let me start with Samoji uh, Bakonjola uh, so that. Uh, <laughs> so that what? <laughs> the NIPR has uh, evolved yes. through the years, you know, yes. and uh, the recent spokespersons summit was novel, uh, the first of its kind. It was considered quite impactful. What are the other events um, in similar uh, fashion that you have lined up for this week? Thank you very much. Um, this week is special. It's the first inaugural uh, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations um, week is the first one very first one and we're addressing what is critical to everyone the economy is a concern to nigerians and we're, we're like uh, the background report said uh the whole of the week outside the annual general meeting is going to be looking at um public relations or uh relations as as asset to revamping the economy and this is a time in our country, in our development, that we are asking that we need foreign investment, we need FDI, we need people to trust, we need, um, we need a kind of rebranding. And that's what we are offering the nation. That's what we are offering the continent. That's what Nigeria is offering the world. I mean, all of us know that we have huge potentials in this country that can turn the fortunes, our economic fortunes around. And we cannot do that if we are not speaking to it. Speaking to it in the sense of the truism of what we have, of what, of what can 
we can get from investing in Nigeria. And listen, the national, the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations has a role to play. Apart from the fact that we know that, you know, we need to rebrand in a lot of ways. We've taken it upon ourselves as institutes, as an institute, to ensure professionalism, which we did at the National Spokesperson Summit. And moving further, to say that you can only sell your product when somebody knows what you have in stock. And reputation has become an integral part of the, uh, should I say, the economics output of any country. So NIPR is saying we are going to be in the forefront of this and using this as the first commencement of the inauguration or I'll say the inaugural uh, uh, outing for our national uh, NIPR week. So we're all set. We, uh, we cannot say that we're, we're, not, uh, we're not pretending not to know what the nation needs, but we are bringing value to, na to the nation to quicken the economics uh, uh, revival, so to speak, of this country. Uh, I know that, yes. Yeah. I, I was going to ask, I'm yes. sorry to interject, yes. uh, uh, what the national goals would be for the NIPR, um, given your awareness mm. that you have to do this. Mm. Hmm. It, it's not about NIPR now. It's about the nation. Mm. It's about you. It's about the market woman, what she has to offer. It's about, uh, say, for example, one of the problems that we've had, particularly in marketing things from Nigeria, is the package, the reputation of it all. Mm. And this is where, it, this is very central to Nigeria. You say, well, you have um, all kinds of pepper and all that, you know, at the center of that table. Uh, it's just there, sitting. If nobody talks about it, if nobody speaks to it, it just remains there permanently. So we're talking about revitalization. We're talking about rebranding. We're talking about, you know, beyond that, creating awareness of what we have as a people. The, um, I, I did a project once, and uh, we're talking about the um, infrastructure, uh, sub, you know, substandard of some of our foods we export. And... We, we realize that there's a whole lot of politics around it. And the value chain for which Nigeria offers in terms of, uh, is it raw materials, is it um, industrialization, is it, you know, just name it, along the economic chain, a lot of times it's forgotten. A lot of other reputational things come into it. So we are offering, and we are saying because we are Nigerians and nobody's going to do it for us. I always emphasize that. So we're saying that NIPR during the week will be dissecting, will be also giving solutions where it is applicable. And we're doing this alongside with the Ogun State Government that uh, has um, offered to host and to be part of this. So um, it's novel, it's innovative, it's new, but it is an essential for economic growth. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mujima Kunjola, uh, for uh, you know enlightening us about what this uh, NIPR week is about. I'd like to get a Professor Ikechuku now, uh, listening to um, Moji talk about what a week is about and what it uh, aims to achieve. Uh, she kept mentioning rebranding, uh, rebranding. So my question will be. <coughs> Uh, besides rebranding the nation, what about uh, the professionals themselves? Because I'm thinking you do not give what you do not have. We know that there are a lot of issues as far as public relations is concerned in this country. Uh, the professionals, the trade, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the ethics and all of that. So uh, could you speak to us, uh, first and foremost, uh, how this particular week uh, would also rebrand uh, the professionals uh, in the NIPR? Well, I'll start by backtracking a little. Um, NIPR will be 61 this year. This one week is also a celebration of that event. We couldn't do it, so it's more like NR NIPR at 60 on the 61st birthday. Mm -hmm. Now, in that 61 years, the institute has grown organically. Usually the impression is that public relations is, oh, get a public relations a practitioner who will tell lies for you. 
Now, this misperception led to the establishment of an institute with the primary goal of showing that this is a profession. There's something you do that affects your reputation. And if you employ a professional, three things are what he can do for you. He will help you establish your reputation if you have none. Supposing you're selling, you're making bread, very good bread, and nobody knows about it. You get a professional who goes out to say, this bread has this and that and that, factually correct, so he's expanding awareness and enhancing your credibility. Now, you may have a reputation that is bad, either because of your product or because of your attitude or because of your environment. A professional helps you to remedy a bad reputation, not by saying that you don't have it, but by showing you what will change and by reaching the right type of uh, stakeholders. If, for instance, you're selling a Rolls Royce, and you're very nasty to customers. You will not be a success story because people who can afford roof stories are mostly people who are used to good manners, who operate at a certain social level. So a public relations officer helps you relate to the right type of public by telling you what to change in your attitude. He may also discover that you'll be taking your things to the right market and he says, sir, you're addressing the wrong public. Okay, you have Rolls Royce to sell, and you take it to Guagualada village, or you take it to my village, you're not in the right market. But if you're selling bicycles, tricycle, palm wine tapping equipment, so he helps you to create a reputation where you have one. If there's a bad one, he helps you to remedy it. So these are the things. Now, the institute was established to get the job done the way it should be done uh, professionally, so in the last 60 years, it's grown organically. First, it went on until it became a law. That means that some people worked for decades to the point of the National Assembly realizing that, look, there has to be a law saying that only those who know how to present the profiles, integrity, capabilities of individuals and organizations should po practice public relations. Now, that organic growth has been on. It got to the point, you mentioned the spokesperson summit, where NIPR was uh, able to buy enough endorsement across all strata of government from federal, from Asurok everywhere, to come to one conclusion. Namely, every spokesperson is capable of impacting the image of his organization. But every organization operates within a territory called a nation. So if you have spokespersons who give disparate narratives, it will affect the perception of the nation. That led to a spokesperson's summit. In other words, if I'm the spokesperson for NTA, Moji is the spokesperson for a private organization, all of us are spokespersons, the Institute put all of them together to put about five things across. One, you represent the image of your organization. Second, you may misrepresent that image by talking about yourself instead of your organization. Thirdly, you may present facts that are not relevant. Fourthly, you may waste people's time and even annoy your audience. So they were given templates for public management of organizational image. That's the purpose of that event. That if you look at the attendance from the presidency, the Minister of Information to stakeholders from all over the country came for it. But even before that, there was a citizens' summit that led to a citizens' charter that only citizens make a nation not raw materials, not infrastructure. And so that summit started at state level, took place at regional levels, then there was a national. So you can see it's a build up and that's why I say it's organic. Now in this one week is also, having taken all that through, done the spokesperson summit, done a master class for spokespersons at different levels. Now the one week celebration of the 60th anniversary of the establishment of the institute is designed to put all of that together. Now, how does that affect national reputation? The Nigerian state is battered on all fronts, and we are suffering the negative economic implications of that at the economic level, at the political level, etc. Now, we could have just one day, somebody will give a long and tiring lecture, usually boring, on what public relations is, and make all the fine speeches now. In one week, the different organic components of what it takes, of the history, of the expected positive outcomes will be put 
on the table for Nigerians. We could have had it in Abuja here, but it's going to take place in Abiokuta. Next time it will go to other places because the real Nigerians are not in Abuja. Mm. You cannot be doing public so I'm relations. Fake. Huh? I'm I fake. Got, I was going to ask. <laughs> I'm fake? Yes, just like me. <laughs> See how we look. How many people look like us? I make no apologies about this statement. How many Nigerians look like us? They are less than 0.1%. How do we look? We look very healthy. You're even laughing. Most don't laugh. That is the truth. Welcome from villages. There are no Nigerians here. They are administrators of the Nigerian public infrastructure and they live in comfort. So if you have that program in Abeokuta, next time you take it to um, uh, Angwarimi in Kaduna, next time you take it, you're compelling those who claim they are spokespersons to see the country they know but which they are pretending they don't know. Now, that's part of the organic growth. And the one week is to drill it down comprehensively. And that's why it will be well reported, not just on formal media, but using every available means of public communication. There are places where you can only talk to people through town criers and all of that. So NIPR is determined, if you like the expression, to mercilessly get Nigerians to understand that how you speak, what you say, and for whom you speak affect your reputation, affect the perception of who you are, and ultimately affects the image of your nation. So, going back to what Moji said, is about our country, but not speaking from the rooftop, beginning from the ground. So by the time you're getting to the rooftop, all the rooms below have bought into the story that will appear on the banner. That's what I want we could achieve. Uh, and okay. who, uh, Prof, <coughs> let, let me just uh, stay with you for a moment, who will be uh, attending uh, the, I'll make a very slight, <laughs> slight <laughs> reference to your earlier comments. Mm. Who will be attending? Uh, I guess there won't be people looking like us. What qualifies someone to attend, by the way? It will be mostly people like us, and I'll tell you why it is so. <laughs> no nation develops because the common man has taken a point of view, a position now. It always takes the elite to give leadership. Nobody should make mistakes about that. When you say, oh, the masses, if you want to help the masses, do what is good for them. Find out their need. Most of the time, they will approach you with their desires. It's, if democracy is for everybody, it makes us equal. It wasn't the masses that thought of democracy. So, and I'll just give you a quick example. There was a, my friend, there was a friend of mine who was a state governor. He'd been governor for two years. We talked before he went. And after two years, I said, look, oh boy, let's do a review. Let me go to XYZ parts of your state and find out from the people what they want. So I went to this particular place, stayed two days with them. What would you want from the governor? Um, it was a south-south <coughs> state. They say, oh, we'd want um, an express road in our place. The other said, no, an international hospital, etc., etc. Now, this is a fishing community. It doesn't even have the land where an express road could pass for close to 50 meter kilometers. And... So I asked them, okay, so uh, how many of you have cars? Three people have motorcycles in the community, that's all. If you build a hospital here, how many people can walk yeah. from your area? Nobody, well, maybe five or ten cleaners. So you see, it will take leadership to listen and ascertain that they don't know their need, not that they are stupid. But by the time we now have, I said, okay, what since all of you are fishermen, if, this, if the governor were to come here and create a reticulation plant, and your polluted waters are no longer there and you can fish, would you prefer that to a hospital? Since not, they shouted, yes, it's a hospital. Now, leading back to what we are talking about, spokespersons have the duty also of affecting public consciousness. That's why you go into a school. You don't tell the children, ask the children what they want. The teacher walks in with some level of knowledge. But the teacher must not adopt the arrogant attitude of just talking continuously. That's why there's feedback. So... Directly to your question, those who will attend will be practitioners, stakeholders, and that means organizations and institutions functioning within the Nigerian space, including corporate Nigeria, who are partnering for this to succeed. But if you say, you know, the best way to do it since it's about Nigerians is to bring people from their farms, first they wouldn't know what you're talking about. Second, they'll be very annoyed if you don't give them anything where you're good. So you're talking about building capacity by those who have a duty at a certain level. If you're going to train mathematics teachers, 
you don't bring in the gate men. But the gate men have their own type of training. Mm. So it's intended to sharpen and refocus the professionals who communicate organizational image, institutional image, and ultimately affect the national image comprehensively. And it's not a 100 meters race. You don't expect that after a bill could um, CNN will be clapping for Nigeria. No. If it took NIPR 60 years to get to this point, up to 50 plus before the nation realized it must make a law saying that spokespersons should be certified, we must know that nations developed by consistent, diligent effort. You know, they say the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. But that's only if you're heading in the right direction. True. If I want to go to Lokoja and I get out of this place, turn left, and I'm speeding at 160, heading towards Nasrawa State, <laughs> I'll never arrive at Lokoja. You will, but it might probably take longer. By the time may... I get there, I'm 90. Those waiting for me in Lokoja is their third generation. <laughs> Many thanks, Professor Ekechiko. <laughs> That it's very holistic. Um, we're, we're going to kick off with um, uh, moments with traditional the traditional institution. Of course, we're going to get yes, to all of okay. that. Uh, the so, details. Yeah, I, I just I just need so that we don't lose sight. Of, yeah. But he spoke about uh, you, those who are expected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, Professor um, General Brigadier <laughs> General. Uh, I apologize, Brigadier yeah. General. Uh, Kuka Sheka. Uh, listening to uh, Mojima Kondrola and uh, Professor Ikechiko, you know, I just wish I could take a week off and also be there, really, because, you know, it sounds like something that would, um, you know, bring the needed change that we want in the country. But could you speak to us about the specifics about this week? Uh, you know, talking about the theme, um, talking to us about uh, those you're respecting, you know, to come give lectures or what kind of... Uh, uh, events are you likely going to be having uh, in this week long um, um, program for the NIPR? Thank you very much. And uh, honestly, I sympathize with you if you will not be able to be in Abiyakuta because you are going to miss so much because it is uh, laden with so many, uh, you know, things that could be beneficial to able person that will attend. Now, the theme for <coughs> the week. It's uh, leveraging public relations potentials for economic recovery. And uh, our elder sister <coughs> has made reference to the fact that everything is predicated on the economic well-being of any society. And public relations has that potential to, you know, ignite the economic recovery of this country. Hence, uh, the modification ideally is supposed to be an annual general meeting of the Public Relations Institute in Nigeria, but it has been modified to make it Public Relations Week because it is all encompassing. We are so many things now we have a convergent point, not just necessarily the practitioners of public relations or the spokesperson, no. Uh, it is a convergence of both public and private sector in the sense that uh, we are focusing more on the economic uh, recovery of this country to see to what extent public relations could be used to enhance the economic recovery of this country. Hence, uh, uh, quite a number of uh, personalities, both from private and public sectors, are uh, lined up to speak, and there could be, there will be cross fertilization of ideas. And it is not just about Nigeria. And one interesting fact is that the chairman of the organizing committee is no other person than the president of African Public Relations Association, who is a Nigerian, Yomi Badaijo, who has been in public relations for over three decades, internationally recognized. And uh, again, there is partnership between the private sector, the public sector, and the Institute of Public Relations. So quite a number of things. But beyond that, again, uh, thematic issues and all the rest, there will be, uh, you know, this side attractions. For instance, where I emphasize in, in fact, uh, very soon we shall have the 61st anniversary of the Institute of Public Relations. And part of it is that, just like Professor has said and others have alluded, nobody will develop this country other than Nigerians themselves. So we are encouraging people to also buy in Nigerian products to see to what extent we can enhance and promote things that are really, you know, contaminous or indigenous to Nigerians that not just for the Nigerians themselves but international market. Hence, 
other people outside the country are equally invited to also attend. So, and then, of course, there are products. Take, for instance, there will be a drill walk away. And, of course, you know, there are other <coughs> side attractions in Ogun State, you know, that people will visit and all the rest of the things. So, it is a whole pack thing. But most importantly, again, people should understand that public relations profession, unlike any other profession in this country, is devoid, uh, devoid of these extraneous variables of, the, you know, either religious or ethnicity. There is no branch of public relations that is for Muslim or Christian. You are either a member of Nigerian Institute of Public Relations or not. So that unlike other professions, you, I don't want to mention them, you have this. But basically, the only divisions we have, we, we are now encouraging younger professionals and the professional sectors. Take, for instance, you know, the sectors of the economy, the energy and all the rest. We have the public relations sectors and sector and we have the young professional sector and so on and so forth. So basically, that it is what it is all about. And... Um, Beyond that also, there are other issues that are lined up to be discussed, to be, you know, coming out with a template that will be a kind of roadmap that will enhance, you know, national economic recovery using the public relations. And, you know, this is a long, I mean, is it, it's a, do I say climax of, uh, conscientious efforts over the years. Take for instance, a uh, professor has made reference to uh, the national summit that was held, uh, you know, on uh, national unity, peace and security in this country by the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. And it came out with a 100 and, uh, I think 106 or so page document called Rebooting Nigeria. It's a kind of template and we are keen in with other but it's take, for instance, the Ministry of Information and Culture and, of course, most importantly, the National Orientation Agencies because we have all the potential to see how best we can. And giving back the, 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 the national spokesperson submit that beyond the individual spokespersons or representations of their respective institutions, first and foremost, both the private and public sectors converge together. Now, you can only talk about institutions, you can talk about this when you have Nigeria. So now, everybody is given a sense of belonging to promote Nigeria first. Then, you go back to the various companies or institutions you represent, because in most instances, people have been speaking in, at cross purposes. And you cannot have development if there is no proper communication and this is the missing link and that is what we are trying to establish to enhance economic recovery in this country now tell us about you know your pre-conference learning series and um digital public relations training is this um uh, a prelude to the main event there are so many ongoing programs. Even yesterday in life, here about 46 people were inducted, you know, uh, postgraduate students at uh, the university were inducted into the public relations. And there are also recognized individuals that will be granted uh, honorary fellowship of the institution. And all those who really go through the metal that they will also be given. So beyond that, again, there are other components that... Uh, meetings there are so many committees and uh, some time ago uh, you made reference to ethics and what have you the institute realizing the fact that uh, we are creation of the law by act of national assembly and that is why you don't have the certificate of incorporation of public relations with corporate affairs commission it is established by the act of the parliament that anybody by whatever means wants to practice public relations must be a member of the Institute of Public Relations. And we are concerned about quackery and impostors. And so two committees were established, one headed by a two-star general, even though he retired, you know, talking about uh, General Olukolade dealing with the standard. And I am heading the other, uh, you know, uh, the other committee that is dealing with issue of professional ethics, etiquettes, and, uh, uh, you know, d discipline. Is enforcement is General Olukolade's committee. So these committees are also going to work coming out uh, standard operational procedures to see how best. And in fact, we have gone far ahead collaborating with Federal Minister of Justice to establish a tribunal against, you know, fake 
public relations, you know, practitioners in this country. So these are the kind of subcommittee meetings that will be working. And most importantly, again, uh, over the years, public relations has established uh, so many assets that, uh, you know, that we are trying to recover. But most importantly, now, there are institutional growth that... Um, they have never happened in the country in some instances even on the continent take for instance now we are establishing the finishing school yeah. and apart from establishing the finishing school we are also going to establish public relations university that is known i don't think even in the world there is a public relations university but we are establishing one and that assurances in fact uh, that's just last week I think Nasrallah state government has granted automatic land to the institute. So there are so many, so many things that a forum of this nature will not even give us the liver at the, the desired time to, to, talk to, about. to exhaust uh, all right, Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Brigadier General uh, Kukasheka. I'd like to get to Mojima Kondroa now because, of course, she has, uh, you know, she, she wants to, you know, uh, raise some points on what has been said earlier. Mm -hmm. But in addition to, you know, your response to the initial questions mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. asked, um, you know, he, he's talking about the NI Power University and all of that. And then, then um, I, I'm thinking, um, what, what is the qualification, you know, for anyone who intends to be a part of this body? Because he said, well, um, I'll be missing a lot if I don't attend. So I'm thinking, no, am I really qualified, first and foremost, uh, you know, to be part of looking at uh, yes. the people I'm seeing? <laughs> So yes. Yes, sir, you're certainly <laughs> qualified and I really would want us to lose sight of uh, you know events that have been planned for uh, the uh, the very uh, inaugural I mean the very first uh, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations week. Um, uh, he's, he's in the committee or Prof would want to speak to uh, the, the qualifications that are needed to be a member. I'm a member so I think that qualifies you. I think you need a university degree. It's important as a mm -hmm. professional in some of the uh, disciplines, mass communication, because part of the plan, part of what has happened initially uh, building up to the week is that we have interacted with uh, mass communication uh, uh, students uh, across board uh, uh, along the axis of where the the conference I mean where the week will be holding and um, letting them know the potentials letting the so you can have students uh, who uh, you know who have been tutored in such a way that they know that there's an opening for them uh, because of their discipline uh, at, at the NIPR but Truly and truly, because I'm a member of the National Planning Committee of the week, I'd like to reel out, you know, the goodies that you'll be missing. Mm -hmm. I wish, I were th thank God, Very you know, so, so, yeah, some measure of it terrible. will be seen live. <laughs> but um, we're talking about leveraging uh, and using the PR asset to ensure uh, a turnaround for the economy. Uh, as a woman myself, I'm, I'm very concerned about uh, you know the turnaround or the reawakening or the the the, the um, reputation that will enhance economic growth in Nigeria. So I don't want us to lose sight of it. So uh, in in in, um, in our preparation for the week, there has been interaction. To answer your question uh, uh, pointedly, there has also also been a build up on what to expect okay. online, and you can go to you can you you can Google this online, and I think we are the uh, fortunate Nigerians, like uh, Prof would say. But uh, <laughs> Prof, I'd like to take you up on that later. But seriously, uh, the NIPR week, aside, you know. Um, celebrating and uh, you know the 60th uh, year anniversary it is also very important that we note that we are bringing to fore where I'm sure Nigerians can listen in to the Minister of Finance the coordinating minister we are expecting him mm -hmm. we're also expecting that uh, the, the the central bank governor should come and speak to us Suddenly now the dollar is, um, well, I hope it continues, is downsizing. And so what are, the, what, what are the prospects for Nigerians, particularly people in business? And that's why we say we are, you know, we are the conduit pipe that will be able to express 
express, you know, whatever government, the jargons around the economy, the PR week will be able to break that down so that Nigerians can understand, you know, what is happening. We, why Abe Okuta, for example? Abe Okuta happened historically is the first place in Nigeria where the media came alive. It's, it's the center of storytelling in Nigeria. So who can, who can best tell our story but ourselves? At the time it gets out there, it is tweaked, it is um, mismanaged, it is, the communication becomes something else. So these are the areas of, uh, that we're looking at. We have been able also to set aside the very first day, because it starts from the 22nd to the 26th, interacting with the traditional institution. Because if we have to take it like uh, Prof said, take it to the grassroots level and make it a Nigerian thing, then we need that community ownership, bottom up, so that everybody knows that I have a role to play. And so we are giving visibility to this. We are making noise about it so that it touches your consciousness as a person, as a Nigerian, as a, as a trader, as an industrialist or a startup to know that there are potentials in this country that can take you far. It will reduce what we are all very concerned about, about our youths today who are very hapless. They, they do not see uh, a future, but there's a huge future out there. So it's um, 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 completely a Nigerian thing for Nigerians using the Nigeria so as our own baseline study like um, Prof would like to say, but on a sustainable level. We have emerged from citizenship to spokesperson, those who represent us, and we are now saying that we want to look at the economy, and we need to do that. So, one week in, Ab uh, in Abekuta is going to be thrilling. We, it's, it's called the Rock City. NIPR will rock that city for the goodness of Nigeria. <laughs> and then you're, one thing you're going to miss, but um, okay, I'll talk to you after, is the Adire. There's Adire. I, I mean, uh, Abekuta is the Adire thing. And we mm. want to go back to wearing Made in Nigeria for Nigerians and using that, you know, to build the economy. You don't have to be told about an Indian. Mm. You see her sari, mm. you see, yes. Proudly, so proudly and boldly, public relations, we are hoping that we can rejig, we can use the institution to rejig the economy of this country, knowing that it is everybody's business. So, uh, I'll, send, I'll, bring, I'll send you pictures <laughs> from the <laughs> Adira <laughs> No, I, 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 yes, but, but I can, but I can assure you, I, I, I and think, I'll bring you Adira, I, I and you must wear it. <laughs> You must wear it. So, so from, from, from all I've heard, I, I think I may have to make arrangements to be there. Uh, yeah, we'll but no, 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 but away from the idea, you know, I, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking that do all the PR professionals that you're respecting have the capacity to handle the kind of message that will be coming from the kind of professionals you're respecting, um, you know, and be able to translate it to the kind of messages that you hope Nigerians would hear? Do you really think that they are prepared for, you know, this, um, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a shift from what professionals have been hearing when they come for conferences like this, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking about uh, PR or how you, you know, about the job, basically. Now we're talking about the economy. So I'm, I'm asking, are you sure that, um, you know, they'll be able to handle the content that will be coming from the kind of people you, that you mentioned? There's an element, um, you know, there's also the National Rebirth Initiative mm -hmm. by NIPR. Rebirth is an acronym. It means reinventing the essence, beauty, integrity, resourcefulness, traditions, and heritage of the nation. And it has four components. One of the component, four components is values reorientation. It's within that initiative that you have um, promotion of made in Nigeria goods. I chair the Rebirth initiative. I'm also the education chair, vice chairman, education advisory council of NIPR. You see, you can't just attend such a conference and expect that because people came. Values orientation includes getting PR practitioners to understand that every audience is different. If I'm addressing market women, I come in dressed in suit, 
and say, uh, good morning, ladies. I'm here to tell you about the advantages of immunization. You know, it has a negative impact on the economy. It affects the GDP. The women will look at each other and Momo, who brought this man here? <laughs> I come to the same people. Well, uh, mothers and sisters who are in the business of buying and selling, I may not be good in pigeon, but I'll still communicate. I've come here to tell you that if you're treated before you fall sick, you will not fall sick, and so your shop will not close. But right now, there's a disease going, getting people, just like malaria, or there's a, a treatment we'll give you so it doesn't get you. That is what is called immunization. And we're going to come because if you're sick for one week, you will make money. Why we are here is to make sure you don't fall sick. So we've spoken to your leaders. They believe us. And since you elected them, you trust who they bring. That's why we're here. You're talking to the same people. Mm -hmm. Your PhD is intact, but your ability to communicate with the market woman is what NIPR wants you to understand. You didn't study in order to talk to scholars. You're not a lecturer. You're a communicator. And that's why you see the point Moji made about membership. If you have a degree in mass communication, is a heads up. But supposing you didn't go to school at all beyond the diploma and you're practicing, your experience is relevant, you can be taken through a master class. So there's nobody who, because of lack of university ed education, cannot become a member. And that's why, yes, you, we have a partnership with NTA with so many other organizations. Mm -hmm. By your very status and professional experience, right. all you know is you're due for a master class and membership. So it's an expansion because if you say, if you, uh, if you have a degree in mass communication, I taught and I still have relations with some universities. Mass communication, the output of information to all kinds of audience in such a way that the content going out is disaggregated because of its simplicity and everybody will get it. Public relations is slightly different from that because in addition to output, you have audience evaluation, message, uh, messaging appropriate for different publics, etc. So mass com has already prepared you for dissemination. You're a broadcaster. There are rules of engagement. If your behavior on set begins to distract the viewers, you get fired. True or false? So that profession, you've already gotten the sense of there's a, a certain form you must be in to communicate with the people. And you now see that in addition to being able to communicate, there are also other things you can do that will influence perception of the person you're communicating for. That's the relationship element. All right, Professor Ekechuk, not to lose sight of the week, like Moji had already yeah. mentioned, but I'd like to ask, are you worried about this unbonding of the mass communication uh, um, um, course of study? In happening now. I'm sure you're aware of the unbundling. So we have different um, um, areas now and there's a PR um, you component. Know, uh, com component. So what happens to other people who are not in the PR components? Do they still qualify to be part of the um, you know, uh, public relations uh, body? That's one. And then secondly, um, the kind of graduates that we have now. You, you said, well, if, I, if, you have, if you have a degree in mass communication that qualifies you to be part of this, uh, this body. Are you worried about you know, the content? that we have now in terms of graduates um, from you know, mass communication or if you like, these other um, um, areas that the unbundling has uh, better? Uh, question number one, the unbundling. The world is heading more and more towards specialization. If I have a degree in electrical engineering, before you had a degree in engineering, electrical engineering, um, he has a electronics, the other one is civil mechanical. chemical. Well, within the same umbrella of engineering, but with different components. And you ask yourself, are we members of uh, Nigerian, uh, what do you call the organization again? Um, Society of, uh, of Nigerian Society of Engineers. Are we? The answer to that question brings us nearer to the unbundling. It leads to greater specialization without detracting from all. You can't, for instance, get a degree in public relations within the Department of Mass Communication and not have what you call electives and minors. And so it doesn't create complication. The question perhaps you may want to even push uh, to needle an IPR is okay if they are going to have specialized in mass in um, um, public relations. Do they still need a PR? They do. NIPR is the public 
acting effective practical arm for the deployment of public relations skills. So their membership is still important. Then the second question was about... Um, the content of what mass communication graduates... Yes, yes, it's appropriate. The other one is uh, the quality of education. Yes. Um, that's a national problem and um, we need to locate it appropriately because a good deal of the time we adopt a purely lamentational attitude. We enumerate all the problems and say chai and go home. No, not anymore. Now, where are we coming from? At the primary, at the nursery level, who are the teachers there? Secondary school dropouts and house girls in most cases. There's really no teaching. At the primary level, what do you have? No NCE. quality. Mm. NCE officially, but you go there. Nursery Rufa is set a test for the teachers using a lower, uh, that's the exam questions for students two steps below the class they were teaching. Primary, over 60% failed. I think it was 67% failure of teachers. Now, you go to the university and that's where the real crisis is. Okay. The better paying sectors of the economy have taken the best out. And most of the time you find second rate scholars or third rate scholars producing fourth rate materials. All of that impacts the output. You have barely literate students. In addition to violations that have led to situations where I can get a degree in architecture, either because I was paying my lecturers or sleeping with them. Now, those are societal problems. That's not our focus. Our focus is on remedial actions. So people come out, they are literate, they are numerate, they can be retooled. The retooling is the concern of NIPR. And that's important to make because the important point to make. Because in the Educational Advisory Council, we've also noted a couple of things, as I always say. What our schools are putting out are five categories of products. The unemployed. Those who have skills, who actually read their books, did everything, but there are no opportunities for them. The second group, the underemployed. Those who read, qualified, came out, they're among the best. I have a degree in architecture and I'm working as a receptionist in a hotel that has 21 rooms. Mm -hmm. That's not why I went to school for six years, so I'm underemployed. Then the unemployable. I have a degree. I don't know anything. I paid until I got the degree. I can't be employed unless I'm retooled. Then you have the irredeemable. <laughs> I didn't get a degree, or I got a degree, it doesn't matter. But the point is that I also absorb the wrong social values. I'm your PA, I'm looking for an opportunity to become a head of parastatal in order to drive SUV. I do not know there's a connection between DG and service delivery. Mm -hmm. I am irredeemable because once I walk into public office, this is where people get rich when they go in. So I begin. You can see what's happening to some of the ministers that you know, were suspended. It's part of that. So NIPR as an institution is not jumping up to say we are the measure for Nigeria in 30 minutes. No. Like I said, it's a long distance journey. So those who have that disadvantage coming from a battered educational system also will be you do the bit where you are because if you look within the university yes there are issues between government and the university but are the universities helping themselves as a professor if i go now to supervise uh, to what do you call it take the defense of a phd candidate now it could take me three months or six to read through his thesis do evaluations etc and i travel to the school <coughs> and i do the evaluation what does a professor get paid Sometimes 50,000. Let's assume it's 100 for uh, moderating a PhD defense. So already the academics assume that a professor must go by public transport for such things. So when scholars also devalue themselves within an area where they are the ones who are capable of taking decisions that will enhance their well being, it impacts all over the world. Surrounding all of this up and coming to NIPR, the issue on the table, the NIPR is an institute we want others to say, let's do for our own profession what NIPR okay, is doing. Fine. So if all other institutions, professional bodies, and associations are doing the same thing, that's how Nigeria will become what it ought to be. But today we are looking at the federal government or the state government. Oh, the president should do this. Oh, the governor should do this. We forget local government chairmen. We forget institutions. We forget that nations are not built that way. We forget that employment is actually primarily pro provided by the private sector everywhere in the world. There's no nation that has less than 60 to 80% employment 
from non-government sources. So when institutional credibility begins to dominate public consciousness, people take matters seriously. So questions of enfo enforcement, like you mentioned NCE, that is correct. You need NCE to teach there, to teach at the secondary, primary level. But how many people there have NCE? You know, and you have it. So, but not to deviate too much from the project on the table, NIPR has various committees. Imagine they have an education advisory council that works on curriculum, mm -hmm. that organizes the training. It's not certification. Come and sit down and we'll be, no. You go through the content, very elaborate, and it's also not academic because it has to be live experiences and all of that. And when we speak, the, the, the rebirth program, for instance, which will soon be flagged off, um, we have partnerships, like I said, we have partnership with um, NTA. More than 60 organizations and bodies and state governments will soon be off. It will flag it off in Quara. Um, Nasrawa gave land before we asked for the institution. But the action must follow it. That's why you see that a lot of things going on is not, we're not looking for media hype. 60 years, nobody, anybody who had NIPR today will think, okay, they, maybe they set it up two or three years ago. So it's that kind of diligent, sustained, and consistent effort on pillars that would shake. Finally on that, and this is a matter of reputation. The current president, he told you that the FAPRA, Africa president, is the one who is chairing this. The NIPR, the public relations person for Africa, is chairing the Abu Kuta thing. Our current president is the ultimate product of excellent person, public and interpersonal relations. Yes, the, the, even the Minister of Information is a member of F FNIPR, the um, DG Vaughan, I think, DG, no, you see, mm -hmm. you're looking at a current NIPR president who is, his own personal reputation gives credibility to anything he gets involved in because he's worked in government for how many years? And there's nobody who has interacted with him without working out with three things. Dependability, capacity for hard work, and decency. And so you see him heading an organization. You say, we are coming for court service. We want to find out when it's convenient. You say, please tell us when we are coming. We'll make time. That's reputation at work. Uh, all right, but just before we go on uh, a quick break, I just wanted you to clear um, when you say if you have a degree, you already asked about um, uh, what qualifies one to be a member of NIPR. I, I know that I wasn't granted membership simply because I had a degree. Yes. So, what does NIPR require when you come with your degree or even without it? The, we will leave the address before we leave. There's, uh, you take the form, you find the requirements, X number of years of experience if you're a practitioner. Because if you're, do, if you're doing work that's already related, that you can't be excluded. Where is the human capital to play with? You're already in the field. Supposing you, didn't, you went to a football academy and I did it, mm. and they are recruiting football uh, players for the national team. Because I didn't go out to an academy, it it's my skill. So the details are there. They, there are different categories of membership. The information is available on our website and we'll share it before. All right, thank you very much, Prof. So we'll take a break now. When we come back, the conversation continues. Stay with us. All right, many thanks uh, for rejoining us. It's still good morning, Nigeria, on the network service of the NTA. Our topic is the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations Week, which is uh, coming up uh, next week, uh, 22nd. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and, and that leads me to my next question, uh, Mujima Kanjola. This is the first week that the NIPR is, is having. And, uh, of course, uh, from all indication, all that you have said, this, is, uh, this has been well planned. And uh, it's, uh, it has a focus. But we've seen over time that, you know, for organizations, if you like, uh, bodies like the NIPR that uh, have such things going on for a while, it, it moves away from being this detailed, this, uh, this rich you know, trying to target a particular thing. It, it moves from that to, uh, if you like, uh, a holiday. Uh, if you like, uh, to get your adire, get in, you know, just a way to, you know, no. just have fun. So how do you intend to sustain, um, uh, you know, this, I mean, away from 2024, mm -hmm. so that um, in 20, 2030, mm -hmm. we're still talking about the NI Para Week, and it's this um, rich. Yes, um, I think um, Prof has been able to, uh, and of course the general have been able to say to you plans to not to sustain the gains that have been made through the journey 
to where we're going, uh, God willing, uh, next week from Monday. The thing about PR is, it's not, it's not a one-off. And what we're trying to do is evolve a situation, evolve um, a national development component that recognizes that uh, PR has to be a, you know, part of it. Um, we have lined up all, I mean, speakers, variety of speakers. We are facing for this week, we are, we are looking at the economy for this year. Next year, another theme will be what we'll be looking at. But before we got here, and no, before I even say anything, if there's an institute, if there are professionals that are very uh, concerned that attract development, it is the PR. Because we don't speak of cough. We don't make, we don't, we, 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 um, I mean, we don't, we don't work as if we are in the sky. We are very, very committed to what is happening around us. Either to bring value, most of the times that's what the PR does, the, the institute does, bring value on, but most importantly, very alert and concerned about what is happening around us. And that's why the economy uh, is, is the theme for this year's week. And is the first one. And for us, one thing I want to say, and which every Nigerian and which prof has alluded to, is that we don't, you know, oftentimes we don't track our impact. It's just a one-off thing. No, the new dawn that has come to the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations is that you track what you do. And that informs all that have been done since uh, uh, this, I mean, in the last, should I say in the last five years? No, beyond the tracking, you know, I'm talking no. about the event in itself. Because yes. I remember that you mentioned at the beginning that Ogun State Government is um, yeah. you know, partnering with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that in case you do not get partnerships, say for 2025, mm -hmm. um, how do you intend, you know, to put it, this together? Yeah, well, we're so sustainable in the sense that for us, for us as a people, we are, we are engaging ourselves. L listen, we are not going for free, even as a member. Yeah. So that's what I wanted so, to. Yeah. Okay. That's what I yeah. wanted to hear. Yeah. So we're not going free for initially when we started, we had what we call uh, the early early registration, early and that was eighty 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 thousand per per delegate, mm. and if you're late, you pay one hundred. Then if you are later, you pay one hundred and twenty. If you are well, latest, yeah. like those of us. <laughs> if you are latest. <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is, we are not dependent on just sponsors, even for ourselves. And that's what Nigerians should be doing. You must be able to put something on the table before you start asking people to, you know, other people to join you. And that's what we have done. Uh -huh. But, yes. All right. Uh, thank you. Let, let, let me, <laughs> okay. let me get to General from Akuka okay. uh, Give us final details of the NIPR week. For instance, uh, place exact place, time, um, speakers at all? Well, I think uh, before I address that issue, let me also comment on the issue of sustainability. Okay. You see, Avekote came about, in fact, almost two years ago, there was a heated competition among about four states to host the NIPR week. And that's what informed last year's hosted of the annual general meeting here in Abuja because it was so contentious, uh, contentious between Nasarawa, um, Osun State, Lagos State and Ogun State. So in the next coming 10 years, there are states that are lined up, the chapters, yes. So just to tell you how hot it is. So coming back to that issue that you're talking about, final details, if you are familiar with Abekuta, you know the June 12 Cultural Center is the venue for the event and each day will start at 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm. And, uh, for how many days? The whole week? Yeah, it will last up to Friday. Okay. Yeah. Monday to Friday. But, but beyond the 
speaking and all the rest. There are other site attractions, like I said, you know, sightseeing and of course gala night and so on. There are visit to Lumarok, I guess. Yes, oh. exactly, and other interesting places, the Obasanjo Library and so many other mm. places. And uh, arrangements have been made, you know with vehicles, you know, to convey people from point A to B. And in, the good thing about it, in, to ensure the safety and comfort of participants, in fact, hotels have given generous discount to, uh, to, to participants. And uh, like I told you, it is not just public relations practitioners. It is all encompassing, all interested mm. persons. There are investors coming in. We are expecting nothing less than 2,000 people Great. across uh, the country. Because just, just, general. just a moment, okay. I, I was going to ask, because sometimes when you say these things, uh, I, I don't want to be content with uh, expecting a direct from you and the prof. Uh, uh, what, what do you do to people like us who, well, if I leave, I won't be here with you. So those who have to be on essential duty who are members and cannot attend what's in it for them are they losers not at all you see there is um you know the good thing covid has taught us a lesson so you right. may not necessarily be physically right. present mm. there are also provision for online for free you can join online for free yes oh wow so yes. you can so be that's a better option yes, and uh, there are also <laughs> prohibition with our partner <laughs> media houses to run some Those of these programs go, you won't go to live rock online. Uh, yeah. no but but you get all the lectures you, you which is get more all important. the lectures and you, you get all, all the lectures the and, yeah. and virtual attendance mm. so you are not missing much mm -hmm. so to speak but of course there you know there are side meetings that really musical presence will enhance such things you know and uh so, so, so basically, these are the issues, and um, adequate arrangements have been made. And I can take you. I mean, I want you to take our words. It's our bond. Everything has, uh, is, in fact, every minute there are updates. You know, about what is going on, the number of people so far, and so on and so forth. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Brigadier, Brigadier General. Kukasheka, Professor Ikechuku, now that the NIPR week is born, does that annul the annual general meeting? No, no. no those that are still no, no. The annual general meeting is uh, what you might call an institutional platform for administrative self regularization at the end of every year, whereas the week is an activity. All right. So, but be, sorry, before we go further, because your colleague is concerned about. Uh, you can't climb it online. <laughs> no, but there's, there's a simple solution. <laughs> and that's you can blue. go and climb the rock in Abuja here. It's a rock also. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's interested in climbing rock, not no, NIPR week. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to a state for many years now. Then the, the other thing also regarding, because we need to make the point that we have a partnership with NTA, okay. which grants any interested staff of NTA who has the kind of exposure you have, first of all, 50% discount. I think that's it for membership, or is it yeah. even free? Yeah. yeah. And, and for interviewing you today, some of us can and get for free. And you are no. executive director, no. news director, news, they are all they fellows. Members. So just to reach members. out to them, yes, <laughs> NTA is one of the organizations, like several others, that have, that have a partner, yeah. and they stand in understanding that we can't shortchange our colleagues who are practitioners. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's that consideration. Beautiful. Uh, so now, now on the issue, we've yeah. talked about online, you know, and that this may. I'm just thinking. I could just quickly, as we wrap up the conversation, the impact of social media in PR. How, how, how uh, you know, how would you want to rate it? Would you say it has been beneficial, or it has some negative uh, sides? The negative is more visible, and we need to understand why. Traditional media is set up like NTA, the Guardian newspaper, this there, and all the rest of it. You have your editor-in-chief, in this case you have a DG, you have ED News, you have the news desk, you have production and all of that. There's what you call filtration. Mm -hmm. So before content goes out, it must meet your house style. For instance, on this day newspaper, you cannot use jargon, etc. In the Guardian, you can use MS instead of Miss. Now that's house style. Those are rules. And nothing goes out except it's fully cleared. Social media as I am today, I am a publisher, I'm a broadcast house, I'm a broadcaster, I'm editor-in-chief, I'm news reporter, and everything, because I have a phone. So I'm carrying my video camera, 
the judgment, the discretion I or your Eden use should exercise after I've put in, I exercise it walking on the road. So that a lot of content, what you call cluttered and uncleared content, becomes part of public consciousness and is available. The question then is, is the impact ultimately disruptive? The answer is no. As a professional PR practitioner, you know news that dies out in seconds. Fleeting output. Gossip dominates the social media and it has its own audience. Now the rules to measure is, when news is put out, what platform is it on? That's number one. That addresses the element of credibility. So as a professional practitioner, you first of all let your employers know. Regular respected media like this, the NTA channels and the rest of them, the Guardian, is not on this platform. So already they know you're a professional. Because these are organizations that do what you call um, evaluation. Before, because if you mount it on your masthead, you take responsibility. So that's number one. Sir or gentlemen of the board, this is not yet on any of the respected media, but it's out there, it's damaging our image. Then you look within social media circles, there are what you might call influencers, they are organized bodies. Fortunately, today you have the Guild of Online um, Publishers. You reach out to them. This is our own story. They operate in the social media. But the mistake you find most people making is that they get very angry, understandably, but nobody is interested in your emotional hurt. Put counter narrative out. And we have several examples to look at. You saw the Risco crisis. Mm -hmm. You saw the um, APIS crisis and a couple of others. Who spoke for Risco? The owner of the company. That's not what it should be. And you notice most of APIS is one of the in my view, one of the most patriotic business establishments we have today. But who always speaks for APIS? My brother and good friend, Onyama. Who, do, you, do you get the point I'm making? You must get, there are layers of access. Yes, if you're the mayor of your place, an issue comes out, you always one in the village square. Who else is it? Does it mean a palace is empty? You're a principal? There's a, an issue in the classroom, you're the one to address it, there's no one assembly. So, they, they taking it all together and bringing it into one space. Social media is a major nuisance, no question about that, but it's part of global reality. AI is also there. Where you and I can be presented as saying we what we didn't say with our face is also there. Now, what is it? The traditional must follow the platforms of credibility. Mm -hmm. First, this has not appeared where it ought to. Secondly, these are the countermeasures I've taken. Thirdly, and most importantly, get your output onto all the social media platforms that carry the negative report. Now, when the same platform is carrying something different, that's a counter-narrative. But as to whether it's there, it's there. But why is NIPR not worried? Because progressively, society grows to respect platforms it knows that it can always believe. And NIPR has attained the, the threshold of credibility. And that's why in, part of, in our partnership with the government, part of the each argument we are putting out is third parties' endorsement is critical to believability. Imagine there has been a military operation now. Maybe the bandits took over Lube. And then they've been expelled from Lube. And you have me in uniform informing you that, uh, oh, yes, we flushed out the bandits, etc., etc. That's good news. But you have the traditional rule of bandits say, of uh, Lube saying, well, I'm back in my palace after the military chased out the, this thing. Who will be more believed? It's traditional, it's traditional ruler. ruler. That's what you call third party endorsement. So part of what NIPR is, is driving is for institutions and government and institutions of state and corporate organizations to understand the value of third party content projection, whether for oil companies, and all of that. So you see that there are so many layers, and like uh, my colleagues have said, it's not something you can onboard. It is a comprehensive national transformation effort mm. from a certain level, and not in order to attract attention. There are things people are trained to do, and which they do for a living, and uh, they leave their impact. And go. I mentioned the president earlier, and I'll repeat. Reputation, public relations. He left his second university and worked with a minister. 
He didn't know the minister was watching him closely. Gave him a come. Eventually elevated him. He was a say. The new minister came in. Where is that boy who worked with you? I think four ministers simultaneously up to the presidency and there is and we've done private projects for state governments on things like this more than ten years ago. If you're looking for a human being, you know, the word sincere is, is Latin. Mm. It comes from our furniture. Sinechere without wax. Or kumche. That's if you have furniture that's you paper it and put wax. The traditional Latin furniture people would separate those that have wax. Any part of him you touch is solid. That's why he's taken seriously everywhere in NIPR. That's why we are gladly working together. This terrorist called the Kukashika <laughs> <laughs> is a relationship. You see, when you come into an IPR and you ask, you yourself, may have to take that word back. It, 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 it will not be right to call my guest a terrorist that's on national he, that's TV. That's what he calls me on national TV. <laughs> fire for fire. It's okay, but, but I, I will join you. I will join you in calling. No, you'll be busy climbing the rock. <laughs> let, let me ask General Pugashika. What, what, what now is to be expected um, after this? Novel NIPR week, um, nationally, globally, if you may? Quite a number of things. First and foremost, um, talking about the membership of NIPR itself, uh, you know, will be better or more enlightened about how to go about, you know, doing the public relations profession. That is one. But for Nigerians, again, she already told you the people lined out to speak. The whole uh, financial sector, the economic sector, is lined up to speak. So there are certain things that have been in the dark for average Nigerians. Mm. Now it will be broken down in a language they will understand. It is not just for them to understand, to also be active partners in the economic recovery of this country. I had mentioned earlier on, it is just not just Nigerians alone. There are other foreigners coming in. Also, they will have a fair idea what public relations practice is all about in Nigeria because we are part of the Global Alliance, which has about almost uh, 160 something countries. So, if you are a member of NIPR here in Nigeria, you are free to work elsewhere in one of this, I mean, any one of those 160. So, they have a template, they will also carry our stories, and that will translate into having foreign direct investment into this country. You know, there are so many stories that are negatively oriented about this country. Mm -hmm. Now, coming, you, you know, the, the, the general saying, seeing is believing. believing. Now, they will help us in the third party endorsement he's talking about beyond what Nigerians uh, will be saying about themselves and about our country and about the economy. So basically, these are the takeaways by the grace of God. And I believe there are more by the end of the you know, Nigerian Institute of Public Relations week. So many other things. And I would like to mention uh, the issue about the social media, as it were. In public relations, actually, is more or less, yes, People will look at it as a threat, but it portends a lot of potentials. Bringing out, take for instance, those of us that have been in the practice for that something years. In those days when you want to issue press release, you have to use the Stena machine and all the rest of it. Now with a simple WhatsApp, you can be able to, uh, you know, uh, pass statements. information mm. and all the rest of them. In fact, I could remember way back 2016 when I was director of public relations, I created a WhatsApp group in which about 200 and something journalists all over the country, whenever I issue a statement that's with photographs, yes. they pick it up and I, it has been sustained. So it has a lot of potential. Agreed that we have to, and that is the essence of public relations. There are ethics, there are ways of doing it, and there are professional guidelines that you have to you know, use, but it's, it's more or less an opportunity to enhance than, uh, then again, one other issue, the issue of membership and what if there are categories of uh, membership, it depends on the level of publication. Yes, those who read mass communication, of course, the unbundling, you all know that those who read uh, mass communication, the yes, the yes, like those of us that we did, we don't even have electronic typewriter, the benefit <laughs> of electronic <laughs> typewriter. You know, now there are about seven degrees out of it. But that's just like he said. In fact, that is why I kept on saying that all you need is just a bachelor's degree. 
because there are elements of management if you are reading even it is a language there must be some element of science those electives mm -hmm. and whatever mm. so unless if you are not a serious minded person and that is why public relations will have all the professional groups within it we have medical doctors we have lawyers we have so many accountants what have you so the fact that you read a different discipline but you have a player you are interested they will look at the qualification and see to what extent, which category of membership, right from associate members and going to the fellow SATs. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Brigadier General. Uh, Mojima Kondrola, as we wrap up the conversation, uh, I want you to give us uh, all the uh, bits that we missed <laughs> okay. uh, that we need to know about. All right. Uh, yes. I, I think uh, it's been wholesome in the sense of um, we've gone down history lane and we're able to arrive at the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations first week activity um but what, what is most important is um you know the consciousness of nigerians mm -hmm. that were awakened to the fact that you have a role to play in national development and that's what the nipr week is intending to achieve and beyond that better understanding of how the economy is run so that you don't expect um it is not it's not magic is like, some people would say rock science, you know, whatever. But it is for you to understand the role that you also need to play in ensuring or reversing, or like he would say, um, helping the Nigerian economy to grow and come back alive. And most importantly, a lot of times, a lot of rumors goes around what government is doing or what citizens are expected to do. The reality, the of the times that we are now will be also dissected at the NIPR week. But the one that excites me the more is that professionalism has now become a stay for development. You cannot, you cannot for example, not have skills in, uh, in the simplest of things. In being a broadcaster, it's either you're made um, you, or you're born. But a lot of people try to just okay i want to be i want to be no this is saying the reality to you this is what to do to do and proudly and like we always say boldly public relations and that says to you that patriotism being a nigerian knowing that you need to be part of what is happening not just to be the armchair critic that doesn't take us All right. For far. somebody just hearing today, can mm -hmm. they still register and be part of the conference? Yes, you can. It's yes, closed? you can. Yeah, no. So you have to go online or how do you? Yeah, go online. Go online. NIPR week. It's, it's, it's still open. All right. Still Thank open. you so much. Uh, so that uh, will if be you it. want to come and you, you can talk to me later. Of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I want to come, uh, but that's if you still give me the idea when I get there. Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. The idea is uh, okay. sacrosanct, okay. so to speak. Okay. Now. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you so Mojima much. Mojima Kojola, veteran <laughs> broadcaster and member, National Planning <laughs> Committee of the NIPR. We, are old. Yes. we thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. And I must say here that we have one of the most progressive and dynamic chairman of the planning committee. Um, All right. Uh, yes, we call him YBO. I must uh, commend what he's been able to bring. Okay. And, and, uh, and <laughs> eyes on the cake, he's time. also the president of the African we're, Public we're, Relations. We're out of time. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Brigadier General uh, Sani Usman Kukasheka, mm -hmm. former Army spokesperson and fellow NIPR chairman mm -hmm. of the planning and a member committee. of the governing the council. council. Member of the many, many counts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much uh, you for the so time the program and the final you professor, so much for the opportunity okay, also. Ike Executive Director, Development Specs Academy, Abuja Fellow, NIPR. It's been a pleasure having you on the program. My pleasure too. Okay, that has been Good Morning Nigeria for this Friday. We thank you for staying with us. We have another date on Monday. Let's keep it. I'm Victor Azu. I'm Henry John. Please remain tuned to the NTA.